Welcome to the second webinars on, in our series on accountancy practices. This webinar is about valuing your accountancy practice and this is brought to you by Morgan Cox Accountancy. Well, there are two questions we commonly get asked. The first is how to value a practice and the second is how to value a block of fees. Now in order to answer this there are two approaches you can take. One is you can apply a standard market formula of a multiple of a gross recurring fee. The second is apply individual specific uh, details with regards to the business, um, the type of market, the geographical location uh, and benchmark that against recent sales on similar types of practices. With regards to the first type of practice, uh, multiple, um, your gross recurring fee base can be applied by uh, on average a multiple of 1.2 to give you the broad range of figures uh, or transactional figures that are occurring uh, in 2012 and 2013. There obviously a range can be applied and this depends on the health of the practice, the reason for sale and the exit time. So if you're looking for a fire sale, uh, for example you need to have access to the money quickly for any other reason, then the range of multiples achieved is going to be lower in the region of 0 0.8, 0 0.9. The upper figure of 1.7, uh, these are rare. These are normally for targeted practices or targeted acquisitions uh, whereby the, uh, the acquirer uh, puts uh, greater value to their business or um, uh, by acquiring your practice. Uh, and uh, we'll go into one of these examples where this was achieved in just a moment. Applying a uh, price range or a, a market price to your practices is not necessarily what will be achieved, and it naturally it can be it, it, can, it can underestimate the actual practice value, and it may overestimate. And essentially, the price achieved will depend on the demand. And if you're looking at selling at the, in the current climate, uh, it's very much a seller's market. There is a, a huge demand for practices. Uh, particular types of practices in particular geographical areas and naturally more competition leads to higher higher bids or higher offers but this does have a ceiling and you won't uh, see sort of multiples above two of GF, GRF uh, in this particular market. Once a price has been agreed naturally you'll need to undergo due diligence of the practice to see that the practice is healthy and uh, we'll talk about uh, what makes an ideal practice in just a minute. So these characteristics are, you, you can benchmark your own practice against these but ideally your practice would have a, a good trading history. Um, practices with a good trading history tend to have uh, lots of, um, sort of repeatable work and, and clients who've been with you a long time uh, who are unlikely to jump ship during the transitional phase uh, of the practice acquisition. It helps if you've branded your, your, your business and your practice well and it's recognisable in the local community as the place to go to, the experts to go and get the best advice and best services in, in the accountancy field. Ideally it would be profitable uh, which obviously we won't under, uh, underestimate and from a uh, employment perspective uh, it would be nice if you had loyal staff who'd been with you for some time who were all fully trained uh, all knew exactly how the process and how the practice worked uh, and, and, and that the practice didn't evolve around you servicing the clients as the partner or certainly a lower percentage. Uh, with regards to uh, client base uh, the bigger the practice the greater the number of clients and therefore ideally the less reliance on any one particular client. It would be good to see that there are no new threats to the business, so for example new practices which are growing at a fast rate that are set up in the, in the building opposite the road um, and to see that your client base is sustained uh, if this is the case. From With regards to litigation whether that's from customers, clients or uh, from uh, previous staff uh, that there's no uh, threats of litigation or ongoing litigation and also uh, a very valid uh, reason for sale whether this is retirement or, um, uh, or another reason. Well I mentioned there were three case reports earlier and this will just give you a, a rough idea of what uh, multiples of gross recurring fees practices have, uh, have been sold for in today's market. Well, the first case is a small individual practice, sole practice in uh, central London, whereby the uh, sole partner had multiple business interests 
and one of the other business interests uh, was providing um, a greater financial return uh, from his investment with his time. So he was offloading uh, his uh, practice uh, in the region of around about £80,000 GRF. Uh, he wanted it clean cut, he didn't want any clawback arrangements, he wanted a single payment and we managed to find nine buyers and uh, we achieved a GRF in the region of 0 0.8. So that's a fire sale, um, obviously that's towards the lower end of the GRF multiple that we mentioned. Moving on to case two, this was a, a good practice, a two partner practice uh, in the home counties uh, with a gross recurring fee base of £400,000 and this practice was on the market for uh, around about four and a half months. We had lots of interest and um, it was actually uh, the, the, first, the first interested buyer who had positioned himself quite nicely and had some unique selling points uh, where the chemistry worked with the vendor and uh, they, they uh, arranged uh, to transition the practice for a multiple of 1.2 GRF. This particular deal, and we'll talk more about the types of structured payments that are, that, uh, are commonplace within the industry uh, in uh, our next webinar, but uh, this deal was over two years uh, with uh, three split payments, um, just above a third on the first uh, uh, day of transaction, uh, a second at 12 months, and a third which was liable to claw back uh, at uh, two years. So that's the kind of general normal transaction that's currently occurring in the market. Case three was a uh, small market town or growing market town uh, whereby the, the practice that was being sold had a, a high street uh, location with a, a good brand name, good li uh, loyal clients and had been around for approximately 18 years. The uh, local hospital provided quite a lot of work uh, with, um, within a niche market which was dental and medical and the acquiring practice uh, was the, the only other practice within uh, the town uh, who also was competing for the same work. The local competitor uh, wanted this practice because uh, he felt that uh, by merging the two or acquiring the, 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 the other practice that uh, uh, he could increase his fees, it would have um, essentially uh, uh, unrestricted access to his client base and that he felt that a, a greater multiple was worth the investment uh, in the long run. So a multiple of 1.6 GRF uh, was achieved on this practice which was um, a GRF of 700,000. So those three examples just give you a, a broad spectrum of the range of GRF that, you, that is achievable from 0 0.8 in the case of a fire sale with no clawback up to a sort of niche um, uh, 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 niche market uh, whereby there were sort of fundamental reasons for the acquirer uh, gaining access to those fees. So we hope you've found this webinar useful and uh, we'll be back with another one shortly.